This recording is going to introduce you to a few of the buttons on your OGT calculator. Um, the negative button, fractions to decimals, mixed numbers to improper fractions. This tutorial is intended with active participation on the end of the student. So if you have not already done so, please make sure you go and get yourself your OGT calculator so that you can work through the problems as I explain them. Uh, if you don't have an OGT calculator, let me uh, show you what it looks like. Okay, this is it right here. If you are an ECAT 10th grade student, you will be receiving one of these in the mail uh, mid-October. And if you are not an ECAT 10th grade student, you can purchase one that looks just like it at many retail stores between about $10 and $15. The important thing is to get the TI30X2S because that is the calculator you'll be able to use when you take the OGT. The one you buy in the store is most likely going to be navy blue, but um, if you get it from ECAT, it's going to be red. But uh, the important thing is it has all the right buttons. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. The first button that we're going to learn about is the negative button. This button is going to help you add and subtract positive and negative buttons. If you look, oh, negative numbers, excuse me. If you look on your calculator, it is the white key that's down in the lower right hand corner of your uh, data entry keys. The way to use it is that you're going to uh, hit that button any time before you have a negative. So if we're going to type in negative 3, you're going to hit that negative button and then type your 3 and then to do this problem plus 7. Okay. Now each of these are what we call the keystrokes. So it's negative 3 plus 7. Okay, and then you want to type your equals, and the calculator will uh, come out and go ahead and tell you that the answer is 4. Okay, so but then with this negative, it's its own keystroke. So go ahead now. This is a recording, so uh, please press pause and then go ahead and try these next two and see what answers you get. Uh, after you have plugged them into your calculator and you've gotten your answers, then press play and we'll see if you get the answer correct. Okay, okay at this point I have gone ahead and written all of the keystrokes that you want to plug in. Uh, if you get the wrong answer, go back and check the individual keystrokes, but it's negative 2 minus 10 equals, and the answer will uh, come out saying it will be negative 12. And then for the final one, the negative 11 minus negative 4 equals, and you'll get negative 7. Okay, notice here that we have minus a negative, okay, uh, the minus and the negative are not merged into one exact thing. You want to make sure that you do include the minus sign and the negative button. And uh, the next one, we're going to use this negative sign for multiplying and dividing positive and negative numbers, and it's still um, going to work pretty much the same way. Whenever you see a negative sign, you want to hit the negative button before you type in the integer. So for 54 divided by negative 9, we're going to type 5, 4, for 54, and then we want to divide that by negative 9 and then hit the equal button. Each of those are their individual keystrokes. So we have 5, 4, divided by negative 9 equals. Go ahead and do that. And you'll get your answer of 6. Okay. So again, do the same thing that you did before. I'm press pause on this recording, go ahead and do numbers two and three, and then once you have your answers, press play and check your answer, see if you're correct. Okay, here are the keystrokes. Uh, negative five multiplied by negative 12 equals, 
and you will get a positive 60 for your answer. Negative 15 divided by negative 3 equals a positive 5. One thing to bring your attention to is the use of parentheses. Whenever you see parentheses like that, it means multiplication. Okay, let's move on. And the fraction button is the ABC button. And let me go ahead and pull up the calculator so that I can show you where that's at. The ABC button is right here. Okay, let me move the cursor. I guess we could use the highlighter right here. That's the ABC button, and you can use this button to uh, plug the fractions that you see in numbers 1, 2, and 3 right into the calculator. The calculator will know what to do with them, and you won't make any mistakes. Okay, so the way to plug it in. You are going to first type the 5, plug in the 5, and then you are going to hit your fraction button, and then you're going to plug in the numerator, the 4, and then you're going to hit your fraction button again. And then you are going to hit the denominator, the 7, and the calculator is going to read that as 5 and 4 sevenths. And then you want, you're adding that to 2 thirds, so first goes in the numerator, and then you hit your fraction button, and then the 3. And if you only type in two things, the calculator is going to know that it's just numerator, denominator. If you do it three times, like with the 5 and 4 sevenths, it's going to know that it's a mixed number with the whole number and the fraction. So this is the keystrokes. And let's go ahead and do that and see what answer you get. And it, I think it's worthwhile as we are beginning and doing this first one to uh, go through what the entry line is going to look like and what the answer line is going to look like. Once you plug in 5 and 4 sevenths plus 2 thirds, the way that looks here is what we call the entry line. That's what you plug in. And then this is where the results come out. It's like a top line and a bottom line entry line and your result line. Okay, the entry line, it's going to be 5 and then like a little backwards L and then 4 and then the backwards L and then the 7 plus 2, little backwards L and the 3. So this is what your entry line is going to look like and then your answer, the way that your result comes out, it comes out, oops, I forgot the equals. Okay, in the calculator it comes out 6 with this little U and then 5 over 21. You are going to need to be able to take that answer and interpret it to mean 6 is your whole number, 5 over 21 is the fractional part. So your answer is 6 and 5 21st. Okay, same routine as before. It's time now to press pause. Try the next two. Remember to just hit the ABC button, the fraction button in between each part of your fraction. Okay, once you have plugged them in, uh, go ahead and take a look at all these keystrokes, see if that matches what you did. 3 fraction 8 minus 1 fraction button 3 equals, you should get 1 24th for your answer to number 2, and the answer to number 3 will be uh, 2 and 4 fifteenths. In the result line of the calculator, 1 24th is going to look just like that, 1 24th. But the 2 and 4 15ths, it's going to be kind of like how that first one was, where it has the 2 and then that U and then the 4 15th. So you just need to realize that this U here is just separating the fractional part from the um, whole number part. Okay, and that is how you can use the fraction button to do all of the um, work for you. All right, there's another cool button here that can be very helpful on the OGT, and that takes it from fractions to decimals, decimals to fractions, mixed numbers to improper fractions, all that good stuff. Because um, if you are happy working in decimals, but an OGT question happens to be in fractions, 
uh, it could you could get confused. Okay, so now let's go ahead and point out where these are on here. And these are, if you look right at the ABC button, and underneath the ABC button, the oh, right above the ABC button, the probability button, what you're going to see is something that says a capital F with an arrow going this way and an arrow going this way to D and then that's right above the probability button and then you're going to see ABC with that same double arrow thing an arrow going this way my arrows aren't that good my sincere apologies to DE okay and what this double arrow means that it means it goes both ways that you can either use this to go from fraction to decimal or it can go from decimal to fraction. Same thing here. ABC is the mixed number. It can go to an improper fraction or if it's as an improper fraction it can go back to a decimal. Okay, so let's just go ahead and practice this. We want to first put in 8 thirds plus 2 and 3 sevenths. I'm not going to write out all the keystrokes. That's what we did on the screen before. So 8 thirds plus 2 and 3 sevenths. Hit equals gets your answer. Okay. And what you're looking for is you want this as a fraction. And you should get 5 and 2 over 21. If your answer comes out as a decimal to start, chances are you did what I just happened to do the first time is you put 8 thirds in with the division instead of the fraction. And it, pretty much this button is going to allow you to uh, do it uh, either way. If you notice, the buttons that we're going to talk about, the F to D, is written in yellow on top of the probability. It's not a key itself. It's written uh, on the calculator. Whenever you have one of those, we need to make use of this second key. And you're going to hit the second key first and that's going to activate all of those other function buttons. So the keystrokes are, you're going to hit the um, second key, and then you're going to hit the probability button. And the probability button is going to activate the F to D. And then you hit the equals. What's going to happen, let me get my little uh, squares around here so we know that these are our keystrokes. So once you have your answer in here, 5 and 2 over 21, then you hit the second key, the F to D button, and then equals. What shows up in your uh, the entry line of your computer screen is it's going to say AMS to F to D. That means it's taking the answer from a fraction to a decimal. Makes sense? This was your answer, the 5 and 2, and 2 over 21 was your answer. You're going to take that and move it from a fraction to a decimal. The answer that you get is 5.0952. So it went from a fraction to a decimal cool thing is that this is reversible. So if you do that again, and again, we do, we have in our, our answer is 5.0952. And then we do that second key. And then we hit the probability button, which activates the F to D. And then we hit equals. It's going to take our answer back to fraction form. 5 and 2 over 21. So you could keep going back and forth, and if you want to play around right now, go ahead and do that, that it's taking your answer and moving it back and forth between fractions and decimals. And this is really neat. Again, if you're given a decimal, you don't know what it is, you can move it to fraction form, or vice versa, it can go back and forth. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this with uh, number 2, where you go ahead and enter it in as a fraction, and then play around, go fractions to decimal. 
Okay, once you plug in the negative 2 and 1 third plus 4 and 3 fifths, your fractional answer is 2 and 4 fifteenths. And then go ahead and do the second fraction to decimal equals. And you get your answer as a decimal is 2.2667. Repeating. Okay, so go ahead, play around going back and forth between fractions and decimals just to get used to the keystrokes and familiarize yourself with how that works. Okay. And that is it. The uh, other button, the improper fraction to mixed number, works the same way. So if we take this 2 and 4 15 as a fraction and then we do the second key and this time instead of hitting the probability button we hit the ABC button on top of the ABC is where it does ABC to DE D over E and that is taking it from A into a mixed number okay I know this looks crazy like a, a whole lot of uh, uh, keys there but really this is only one button because if you look above the ABC you're going to see ABC to DE and the answer that comes out when you do that 2 and 4 fifteenths turns into 34 fifteenths and then that is your answer as an improper fraction so and that again is going to work both ways so now you can go ahead and toggle that and if you hit the second key again and then hit the ABC button again, it will take you back to 2 and 4 fifteenths. Okay. We're not changing with the answers or anything, it's just uh, being able, the calculator can help you work with it in a different form. All right, that's it on this calculator tutorial. So please contact your teacher if you have any questions on how to use the negative button or the fraction to decimal or improper fraction button. Thank you. Have